Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world. This is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a Cube Conversation. We always love talking to founders of companies. We love supporting the Boston area community. Uh, but even more uh, right now, we're, we're of course talking to leaders in the industry about uh, some of the challenges facing uh, with the global pandemic. Uh, so happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, uh, Paulo Rosado, who is the founder and CEO of OutSystem. Uh, you are based in Boston, your, your company is global. Uh, Paulo, uh, thanks so much for joining us. And let, let, let's start out talking about kind of the, the age we are in right now um, and how you are you know, supporting your your customers, your employees, and the developer community uh, that 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 you engage with. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here, Stu. Um, we are uh, we actually since twenty third of March that uh, our eleven hundred employees are all working remote. Uh, so we've uh, we've had uh, we ha we've had more than uh, one thousand uh, Zoom calls uh, logged. Uh, at least among the people that I, I know. And uh, we have dogs and kids everywhere. And uh, we had to adjust because um, we have a lot of uh, new parents. So the kids are all over them and whatever. But the, actually productivity is, is, and morale is, is really at the, at, the high, at, the, at the high rate. Uh, the, the business is going really, really well. However, um, um, as, as in a very out systems uh, type of way, Actually, because we are we are so fast building these digital solutions that we've uh, uh, we've launched a program with our partners. Uh, we asked them for ideas. We got more than uh, 200 ideas coming in, and we're sponsoring 20 of those ideas. One of them is with Deloitte, uh, for instance, where we fundamentally in uh, one week they've created a full logistic system to uh, to manage all the supplies between 16 uh, municipalities including ventilators, masks, PPEs, and the like. Yeah, well, that, that, that's great to hear, right. So uh, if people want to find out more on the OutSystems website, it's the COVID-19 uh, Community Response Program. Uh, and, you know, love to see, uh, you know, Paolo, you, you know, we're, we're going to talk a bit about OutSystems and what you're doing for customers. Uh, of course, the speed of development of new applications is what your company's been doing for a long time. and. You know, we, 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 it, it, it kind of becomes a little bit bromide that we talk about, you know, oh, well, software is eating the world. Well, in challenging times, right, how is software helping to meet uh, the challenges that, you know, communities, municipalities, employees, companies uh, need to uh, survive in these challenging situations? So uh, anything else you want to talk about, uh, kind of the community program? Yeah, well, um, so what, what we did is uh, we opened up the community for worldwide community, actually, because uh, today we serve about 60 countries. And so we wanted to, to have projects that really had impact. We had a couple from Germany and uh, some from, uh, from Asia. And, uh, and it's amazing. Uh, and uh, today we have sponsored 14. So we have 14 high scalable installations already running. Some of these projects have gone live. Some are, are still in development, uh, but uh, what's interesting is that uh, is that the two hundred thousand plus communities uh, the, the, the getting together. We have uh, all these virtual teams, uh, uh, subject matter experts, relationships with health officers and health offices, uh, and uh, developers, and uh, we just uh, we're just churning away. And 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 the innovation of the people when they have actually something that they can build. Uh, real solutions fast, they can iterate on top. It's absolutely amazing. And um, it's our contribution also to, to the world here, really. Yeah, very important, Paolo. Thank you for, 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 for doing that. Um, boy, you know, I, I think, Paolo, you know, you, you started the, the company back in 2001. Uh, the discussion around software and developers was rather nascent, uh, you know, back in those days. So. Bring us a little bit through the journey of the company, if you would, uh, and you know some of the major things that are you know different now. Uh, in you know, really, you're, you're entering the third decade of of, of the company. Uh, so you know, what, what what bring us back to some of the early days as well as you know what is significantly different uh, today. Actually, the uh, the idea that we had initially was uh, was was very much the one that has become true. We're just about 14 years ahead of the market. 
Um, and so we, uh, uh, the company is called Out Systems because, because at the time we, we believed that uh, a large percentage of systems would migrate out of the data center. That, that is what today is, is called the cloud. Um, we, uh, we, 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 we believe at the time, uh, based on all evidence, that uh, a lot of software that companies were, were going to be built would need to be done in a very agile way, which is you'd need to build fast, but not only build fast, to change very, very fast. And it took us a while until we reached about uh, three to four years ago, when suddenly everything became agile. Suddenly, uh, everything that you build, all the software that you build, you no longer had uh, one year, 18 months to build this project. Now we had, you had weeks, and, and th those times have been compressive. And so what's happening now is we encounter ourselves in a world where uh, companies increasingly want to build more software because they want to be differentiated, they want to compete. But the, the talent available and the speed they have to build these pieces of software are becoming more and more challenging. And uh, we help. We help a lot in doing that. We are uh, the most mature, the most advanced, uh, no-code, low-code platform in the market. And so that it's, it's a great time for us now. Yeah, I, I, Paolo, I, I'd like to help understand, uh, you know, software development, application modernization are, you know, very important topics for a number of years now. Uh, you know, I think back to last year, Satya Nadella on stage at uh, Microsoft Ignite, and he was talking about, you know, just the massive amounts of new applications that would be built uh, over over the next few years, and it's interesting. A company like Microsoft, that you know, you, you go back ten years ago, it would be like, well, you'll be using all of our software, not thinking about building your own software. Uh, so uh, you've got uh, you know partnerships with the public cloud providers. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, you know new uh, partners as well as competitors entering this space. So help us understand kind of where where OutSystem fits uh, in this ecosystem and uh, differentiates itself uh, from some of the other noise that's out there. No, absolutely. Well, one of uh, one of we we woken up a lot of giants uh, with uh, definitely with this approach. Uh, one of the differentiators uh, is that these platforms are actually pretty hard to build. And so, if you look into at what Satya said in that particular conference, uh, he was mentioning the fact that uh, fundamentally every company needs to become a cloud software company. But in order for you to become a cloud software company, you need a very large number of talent skills. You, you need to, to, to have developers, front-end developers, back-end developers. You need to have people who understand DevOps. You need to, un to understand scalability, security, all of these things. You can do that with uh, the tens and even hundreds of tools that are in the market. But what this, the, the platform like OutSystems end up by doing is end up by abstracting a lot of that and just gives you a very fast capacity for you to build your mobile applications, your pricing engines, your workflows, your portals in a very fast way. So leveraging the people that you have, leveraging the unique knowledge of the business that you have, and letting you catch up to disruptors that really have all those technical skill sets that today are so rare. Yeah, uh, and I'd love to hear, tell us a little bit, bit, bit about your customer base. So I, 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 you've been around for many years, so I'm sure it is quite diverse, but uh, you know, how many customers does OutSystem have? Uh, if you've got a you know, key use case or two that might help us understand uh, you know, where this, this low code, uh, you know, no code solution is helping them uh, through their, their, their journey. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have uh, companies like Safeway, Chevron, uh, uh, T-Mobile, all of them have, uh, have somehow different use cases because uh, we are in the business of innovation. And so whatever you want to innovate with, you innovate typically without system. We have a, a particular company, which is the largest uh, uh, terminal management, oil and gas terminal management company in the world. They have 73 terminals. And one of the things they built was a full uh, ERP, a full platform, digital platform to manage the whole uh, logistics of the tankers that come into the port, deploy the oil in reservoirs, and then having trucks that come and take the oil away. It's a very complex business. And they were looking at fundamentally a four to six year project 
to build this, and they did it in seven months. And so uh, these type of compressions of time for these very large systems uh, is, a, is a huge, huge differentiator. Then we have on the other end, uh, companies, uh, uh, companies that have built their front ends, uh, typically mobile applications integrated with uh, web applications. And those applications change fundamentally almost every day or every week. We have a bank, for instance, that's releasing a version per day in their applications. That, that speed of development gives them a huge competitive advantage, but puts a lot of pressure on the stack and all, all, this, all, all, all the IT that, that's needed. And we help there because of that. Yeah, uh, Paolo, uh, we, we've been talking for years about some of the transformations that, are co uh, that companies are going through and that application uh, transformation really is one of one of the bigger challenges that they face along those lines. Um, in, in the uh, some of the events I go to, the communities I look at, you know, there's a lot of talk about how containerization and Kubernetes uh, is helping to move the infrastructure team to get ready for this. Of course, we've talked a bit already about how public cloud's changing things. Uh, serverless is a different paradigm for how application developers should think about uh, the platforms they're living on. How does OutSystems kind of plug into these trends, which you know have come along, uh, you know, in, in the time since you, you've been out there? Oh, we've um, very well. I mean, uh, uh, the way the way these platforms work, at least the way the OutSystems platform works, is that we have an automation layer who's responsible fundamentally for compressing time and making things increasingly easier. Basically, just give. Uh, an IT department or a company the capacity to build things 100 times faster. But underneath, we actually use the newest architectures that give us uh, high scalability, auto scaling, um, resilience, 99.999% of uh, uptime. And in those cases, for instance, we use uh, for that, we use containers, Linux, uh, Docker, all of those type of, uh, uh, those, those type of technologies. We run a standard on AWS. We also run on Azure. And so we can provide automation, but underneath, we're fundamentally using the same tools that uh, all enterprise grade architects are using. Okay, great, Paolo. Uh, last question I have for you. Give us a little bit your outlook on uh, the, the future of software development, uh, what we should be looking at uh, when it comes to out systems uh, and, and your community. Well, uh, Actually, it's not only about our systems, it's, it's all about uh, development of software. Uh, we believe, and we see that, we see evidence of that, that uh, while software development used to be done by some elites about uh, 10, 15 years ago, today every company needs to build their own software. And uh, more than 65% of uh, the software, the new software that's going to be built in the next three to five years is going to be done with a no-code or low-code platform. It's just, that's just too much. You, you just need that speed. You, you don't have enough talent. And actually what we see, and we're doing a lot of research there, is that uh, complementing the developers, we're seeing more and more AI bots that are actually assisted, uh, that assist development in a lot of the boring tasks that are part of the development and deployment cycle, like validation of code, automatic testing, um, uh, creating the right patterns of architecture for high scalability and maintainability. Uh, we, we're introducing a lot of those things in the platform. So in the next years, we believe we'll see more and more developers being helped by artificial intelligence bots, therefore uh, progressing in that uh, 100X to 1000X automation, productivity enhancement. Well, I, I tell you, you're hitting on one of one of our favorite topics to talk about. Uh, <laughs> we, we did a bit years ago with Andy McAfee and Eric Brynjolfsson from uh, fr from MIT talking about how it really is about racing with the machines. So, you know, I've seen things that said, "Up, oh, you know, computer programmers, you're the next things that are going to be replaced by by robots." I, and what yeah. I'm hearing from you is, of course, what we know is that really it is the combination of people uh, plus the software that are really going to supercharge things going forward. Uh, it's, it's, exactly. You're nodding, That's so you're exactly in agreement. <laughs> and we already have evidence of that because we have a, a, a lot of our AI is already deployed inside the platform. And so we're measuring, we're learning with it. And we can see tremendous, almost exponential 
improvements. It's almost as if a developer, as they as they they creating these functional requirements, it gets augmented uh, with an extra brain. So it really works. It's and 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 it's time now. It's it's reaching, it's reaching time for AI to use to be used for to help the software development cycle. All right. Well, Paolo, thank you so much for the conversation. Absolutely, we hope that you know these kind of technologies are the ones that are going to help uh, the global economy uh, as we you know hopefully move forward from uh, you know the results of uh, the, the current global situation here. So, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, definitely look forward to keeping you, track Steve. of uh, the, the company in the future. Thank you. All Steve. Right. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, check out thecube.net for all of the digital events, as well as the archives of, uh, of interviews that we've been done, uh, reach out to us if you have any question. And as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.